One of the great joys of reviewing theatre is sometimes you go and see a show that you know nothing about, it's a world premiere, you have zero expectations, and you end up completely falling in love with it. Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my theatre-themed YouTube channel. My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I am an international theatre critic, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about the brand new musical In Dreams, which features the songs of Roy Orbison. So I went to see this last week at the Leeds Playhouse in the UK where it's having its world premiere, but it's heading off to Toronto, and if I'm not mistaken, it probably has Broadway in its future. So everyone needs to be paying attention to this show. UK people who have it here right now and don't know what you're about to miss, Broadway people, Canadian people, this is something you definitely need to be aware of. Now I mentioned it features the music of Roy Orbison, it's not a biopic musical, but it is a jukebox musical. It's more in the vein of Mamma Mia, where it's using those songs to tell a completely different story than the life of the artist whose music it is. It's not a Jersey Boys or a Beautiful or an Ain't Too Proud or anything like that. It does feature a book by David West Reed, who is known for having written Schitt's Creek and also having written the musical And Juliet, and this show is reuniting him with And Juliet director Luke Shepard. So if you see this show and you get a little bit of an Anne Juliet vibe in terms of the way that it's composed, the way that it utilizes its music, then you wouldn't be too far from the mark. So lots of questions to answer in today's video. Given that this is a completely new musical, what is it all about? Why did I enjoy it so much? And whose is the performance that I think could win a Tony Award? Honestly, a little bit bonkers that I'm having that conversation already about a show that is in Leeds right now, but it's that good. So let's talk about it. Here is my review of the new musical, In Dreams. So like I told you, this is not a biopic musical. This is all about a character called Ken Ryan, who is played by Broadway veteran Lena Hall. At the beginning of the show, we meet her on stage performing at a gig where she tells us that she used to be part of the popular group Midnight Radio. Not Midnight Radio. Oh, I knew I was going to do that. That is a song from Hedvig and the Angry Inch that she was in on Broadway. Heartbreak Radio. She was in the group Heartbreak Radio. So while she's performing on stage, she gets a super important phone call and she takes a break to go and answer this and we can see that she is receiving bad news. Without giving too much away or telling you all of the details, we then cut to the location where we will spend the rest of the show, which is a Mexican restaurant run by a guy named Oscar, his wife Nicole, his grandmother Ana Sofia, their chef Tom, and they specialize in authentic Mexican cuisine, margaritas, and memorial services. The show talks a lot about Latinx cultural traditions surrounding death, the kind of Dia de los Muertos thing, the idea of feeling connected to your loved ones who have passed on, of remembering them, of celebrating their lives. So Kenna arrives at this location for motives that soon become clear, and they convince her to reunite all of the members of the band Heartbreak Radio, one of whom is a sort of a chaotic British drummer called Ramsey, who is now an Uber driver that maybe she used to have a thing with. And the other two members have eschewed their rock star lifestyle for domestic life, where they have a whole bunch of kids and a decent amount of stress. Throw all of these characters into this setting together, let some revelations unfold, put some brilliant tunes in, and you have a recipe for a really fun and great show. Structurally, it's not dissimilar from Anne Juliet, the way they use this music, the way that the music relates to the plot is very Mamma Mia, but the tone of the show is very waitress with a little bit of Disney's cocoa just sprinkled on the top. That is the best way that I would describe this show to you. If any of those things sound appealing, you're gonna like this one, particularly if you're a Waitress fan. It's really giving that same kind of a vibe. It's Waitress if Waitress was happening in a Mexican restaurant and was about getting an old band back together. If you're curious about the actual songs featured in the show, I can tell you some of them now. We have Dream Baby, In the Real World, End of the Line, You Got It, Communication Breakdown, I Drove All Night, Running Scared, Blue Bayou, Only the Lonely, Margarita, A Love So Beautiful, Handle With care, that's just the first act. We also have Crying, Oh Pretty Woman, of course that is going to be in there. It's Over, Mean Woman Blues, Not Alone Anymore, Love Hurts, the title song In Dreams, and Wild Hearts Run Out of Time. So now I've told you a little bit about what this show is actually about and tried to give you a bit of a flavour of it, let me tell you if it's any good. So I'm giving this 
a four star review. I think this is really at the beginning of its development and it certainly has room to grow as a show dramaturgically to tighten a few things up. This is why it's having a world premiere in Leeds and then it's going to Canada. It's not opening straight on Broadway or straight in the West End. Not that those aren't fantastic and worthy places that it's visiting first, but it gives the show the time to tailor little bits and pieces. I think this has the capacity to absolutely be a five star show. I don't think there's any kind of limiting factor within this material or this concept or these performances. There's just a few storytelling points where it feels a little how I sometimes describe Waitress, which is it's just not always impactful enough. Waitress grew on me as a show, but it always felt like the kind of theatre that you would watch on a Sunday afternoon that was kind of cosy and nice vibes and not on a Saturday night that was really definitive and impactful and powerful. And I think this has the potential to go from matinee theatre to evening theatre by punctuating a few more of its emotional beats and developing a couple more of its characters. I'm going to tell you specifically what I'm talking about uh, in just a little bit. But it is a really great show. You really feel for these characters. The concept is so strong. Who doesn't fall in love with a getting the band back together kind of a story? This setting is so rich and theatrical. All of this Latinx culture that it's exploring within the show. It looks beautiful on stage. It's so meaningful. It allows for so much poetic and profound dialogue between these characters. The characters who are getting to share their cultural perspectives with uh, these other characters, which in itself is a seamless way of imparting those insights to the audience. It's really clever that way. And I know a lot of people are critical of jukebox musicals. I know that this is not everyone's thing and we would rather see a completely new musical with a completely new score. And I get that. And believe me, I'm absolutely on the same page there with you. But I will say, these songs are really great. They have a lot of inherent theatricality, which is what we can hope for in a jukebox musical. They feel cohesive. There are a few lyric changes here and there, like A Mamma Mia does, in order to make them really tailored to the plot. They don't feel shoehorned in. Something like A Pretty Woman, where we were entering the second act, and I'm thinking, how on earth are they going to put this in? It's done in a really fun and whimsical way. And then you have songs like Crying that feel written for this show. I knew a lot of these songs beforehand. I don't know that I could have told you they all had a Roy Orbison connection. That's because I only listen to musical theatre and I know nothing about music in the real world. However, I absolutely understand now why there is justification for a Roy Orbison musical because the richness of the lyrics and the character, it's, it's wonderful. It's really great. So the setting is really winning. The other thing that's so brilliant about this is the characters. David West Reed has created some really, really fantastic characters. There is room for them to be developed, like I said, just a little bit more. You can tell from various points in the book that this is a writer who has written for television, but they are all endearing. You root for these relationships to get repaired. You root for these communication breakthroughs. It all goes to really satisfying places. It's just fun to watch. I immediately wanted to go and see it again. It's an easy rewatch show and and a lot of people are really going to fall for this. Like you had these huge fans of Waitress, this show is going to have exactly the same thing. So bearing in mind, I think this is a really great show, and I'm not going into too many specifics about why that is. Just in this section of the video, I'm going to tell you about my favourite performances, my favourite parts of the show. I do want to focus on a couple areas where I think moving forwards, the show could improve itself. So I think David West Reed's book is just fantastic. It's tremendous. You get the sense of these characters. They all feel like real people. They're all endearing and heartwarming. The whole thing is just really beautiful, really touching and really lovely to watch. I do think the beginning of the show could pack a little bit more of a punch. It does a similar thing to Anne Juliet where we get this kind of a soft open that steadily takes us into the location where we will be spending the show. I think given that we have a lot of rock and roll in this score and it's about old rock and rollers, it might make more sense if we opened with Heartbreak Radio back in their heyday because at the beginning when Lena Hall's talking about it, we're not completely sure as an audience if we're meant to know who Heartbreak Radio were or if that's just something within the world of the show, we quickly come to find out that that is the case. But I think even if it was just like a few moments of it and they were silhouetted and we didn't get to see who they were and we just got this teaser of them performing an opening number or behind a curtain or something, I think we need that context to explain what the show is going to be and where the show is going to take us. Because as it stands, it starts with Lena Hall coming out through a curtain, picking up a guitar, and kind of playing a bit more of a low stakes gig in the later years of her career and telling us about Heartbreak Radio. I like the way the first act ends, I like the way the second act opens, I like the way the whole thing ends, I just think we need a stronger opening number. 
you can tell that David West Reed is familiar with TV writing because we get the characters coming through really strong, really quick. They come in with these personalities and with these dynamics and we immediately, seconds after meeting everyone, we know exactly where they stand and how they feel about each other. And that's brilliant. But the thing with TV writing is it finds a groove and then it just coasts in that groove. And I think there's room for us to ebb and flow dramatically a little bit more. The way that you hit the emotional beats in theater is very different to the way that you need to hit those same beats in television because the format is different. The structure is different. The timing of the whole thing is different. I like the places we build to and we journey to in the second act. I just think they could be set up a little bit more dramatically. And then once we arrive at them, we could capitalize on them a little bit more. I'll give you an example of this. So the character called Oscar, who runs this restaurant, who has made it his mission to uh, make it a place that gives these fantastic memorial services because of his own grief about his deceased parents. He is internalizing a lot of this, he is not sharing it with his wife and he is going out on these walks in the desert where he is talking to his parents and he's not really letting her in emotionally even though she is pregnant with their first child and she's getting very anxious about this. Now what I'm going to tell you about what happens in the second act is obviously a little bit of a spoiler if you don't want to know about that skip ahead just a few minutes in this video but by the end of the show she has come out and spoken to him and convinced him that he needs to let her in and he needs to lean on her and she actually says I can never be your parents which I do think is a strange line I think we could probably just rewrite that just a little bit because the idea just of her, his very pregnant wife, trying to fill the role of his parents is an odd one. I absolutely get the sentiment of what's being said there. It's just not the exact words I think we want to hear. But they have this breakthrough of communication and they embrace, I think, because it's talking about him being vulnerable. If we actually saw him cry or break down just a little bit in her arms, that would be more meaningful and more powerful. It would be more theatrical and a little bit less television. The other thing is I think we need just a little bit more context to really feel the weight of this. Now there's something else that happens in the second act because, and this is another spoiler for the show, Kenna has been reluctant to tell everyone else at the party that she is having at this restaurant why they have been invited. And he urges her to tell them the truth. He even instigates her telling them the truth. And I think if there was something else in his backstory, maybe while his parents were getting ill, they didn't want to tell him, they didn't want to burden him, so he didn't find out until it was almost too late. They kept that from him, and that's why he feels so strongly about Kenna being honest with her friends. I'm trying not to give too much of the plot away, but it's really impossible when I'm making these kinds of specific notes about the show. Like I said, if you don't want spoilers, I, I hope you've already skipped this bit. But I think with his character, certainly a little bit more context, a little bit more backstory would pay off hugely. I really like the way that the show is staged. I like this set. I love the uh, screen in the background that gives us different uh, times of day. We get sunrises, we get sunsets with this lovely set in front of it with all of these beautiful decorations. Shout out to Arnulfo Maldonado for the set design and George Reeve for the video design. I will say there is a revolve on stage right. That I don't think is super necessary. I love that Luke Shepard just loves a revolve as much as I do. I will never say no to a revolve in a show and it seems neither will he. However, I don't think we need the revolve in this show. You know, it's nice and it's sort of enchanting when it gets used, but I don't think it's strictly super necessary. So those are just a couple of my thoughts about how the show might improve. Let me tell you about my favorite moment of the show. So when this part of the show happened, I'm pretty sure I slapped my boyfriend Aaron's leg so hard, I apologize to him for that. But one of the things that gets me very excited is going to a musical that I don't know will feature Celine Dion songs and then it features Celine Dion songs. I had no idea that there was any kind of a Roy Orbison connection to the song I Drove All Night. I only knew that as Celine. But when it happened in the first act, first of all, it's a great song. Second of all, the way that Oliver Thompson performed it. And third of all, the way that Luke Shepard staged it. The show is called In Dreams and this was a number straight out of one of my dreams. It was perfect, it was glorious. It did that kind of a waitress style thing that I really love in directing where we're creating a car 
um, out of the other props available on the stage. So we're still seeing the restaurant set, but it's sort of dimly lit. And he is at the front. There's members of the ensemble holding things around him to make it look like he's driving a car and he's interacting with these props and it's like kitchen implements. I love anything like that, first of all. The attack with which Oliver Thompson sung this song. I'm so glad he's in this show. He is perfect for this role, but I'll tell you more about that in the next section. That just felt like specifically a musical moment that had been birthed into this show for me. But for everyone else, it's a great number. I will also shout out the song Handle Me With Care. It's just tremendous. Any opportunity in this show to hear Lena Hall going off vocally and screlting with her completely unique and gravelly and thunderous vocal tone that is delicious is just a great opportunity. And there are so many moments towards the end of the first act and in the beginning of the second act with so many songs that are just fun and uplifting and you never want this particular section of the plot to end. That's how enjoyable it is. The other great joy of this show is just the way that the music and the book interact with each other. And it does something I really love from And Juliet. It's almost copied exactly here. Towards the end of And Juliet, we have this moment where Shakespeare, played originally by Oliver Thompson, and Anne Hathaway, played originally in the West End by Casti Jansen, they're sort of coming back together after a little bit of a marital spat and he's trying to appeal to her and tell her how much he loves her and he's speaking to her and she's singing tell me why and then he keeps speaking some more she sings tell me why again it's a very gentle reprise of a song that was sung earlier in the show with dialogue fitting around it and it's a cute moment it nods to those lyrics it's very playful this show does something very similar with the song anything you want you you got it. And Oliver Thompson plays a very similar role in that same scene. It happens in almost the same place in the show. It does almost exactly the same thing. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So it is high time I tell you about these performances. And we have to start first and foremost with Lena Hall, who, as you may have guessed, is the person I think could win a Tony Award for this performance. She is sensational in this show. And Lena Hall is just a terrific performer to begin with. First of all, that voice is just incredible. Like I said before, truly unlike anyone else, this rocky edge that she has to her voice, completely believable as this ex the country rocky singer. There's an unparalleled passion when she is singing that is just glorious to listen to. But it's her characterization of the character Ken Ryan that really makes you root for her in this show. She's reluctant to show a lot of vulnerability, but is forced to in various parts of this plot because of the things that she is going through. It's a soul-bearing performance. It's a comedic performance. It's a light-hearted performance. She has this wonderful sarcasm, the way she interacts with different characters. She's brilliant. And we love to see a female lead with agency, with independence, who makes romantic choices entirely on her own terms. And I think there's a lot about her character that a lot of people are really going to relate to as well. When she sings the song Crying at the end of the first act, there is a moment, it's been very soft in this introduction, and then she jumps up the octave to sing the word crying for the first time. It actually made me gasp, I think. But just as brilliant alongside her is Oliver Thompson. He is playing a British character amongst all of these Americans, which is a pretty decent choice. He gets to do his charming British accent. He sounds very similar to how he sounded in And Juliet. He has this wonderful rock tenor voice. Like I told you, he gets to kill the song I Drove All Night. He's so charming. Charming. He's incredibly endearing in this role. It's kind of the perfect fit for him. I question whether or not, given that this is the creative team from Anne Juliet, whether aspects of this role and its character and the Britishness were written specifically with him in mind, because it works so well for him. With the slightly self-deprecating humour and with the charm, it's perfect for him. And he feels completely believable as this kind of happy-go-lucky middle-aged rocker. Heartbreak Radio is completed by Sean Reese Williams as Jane and Noel Sullivan as Donovan. They're the married couple with a lot of kids and a bunch of stress and also really endearing characters in this show. There's no one that isn't super likable in this story, honestly, while still being decent, fleshed out characters. Sean Reese Williams in particular, I don't think she has a huge wealth of musical theatre in her background, but she's so good at it because the vocals, sensational, the characterization, the immediate 
immediacy with which we understand exactly who she is and we get on board with her. She's one of those fun supporting characters that you just want to spend more time with. Her dynamic with Lena Hall as Kenna is perfect. Her dynamic with Noel Sullivan as her husband and the way that that fluctuates throughout the show is just wonderful to watch. He's super fun as well. It's great getting to watch both of their characters relax into their new setting away from their kids and kind of relive their glory days. But there are so many fantastic supporting performances in this show I have to tell you about, and probably my favourite was Alma Cuervo. Alma has a bunch of credits on Broadway and she's wonderful in this show, utterly heartwarming. She's one of those older characters that gets to impart a lot of wisdom and bring a little handful of sass in with that as well and a lot of comedy. Maybe there's a little bit of a later in life romantic subplot. She kind of fulfills some of the same roles as the nurse in Anne Juliet. She gets some enormous laugh lines and everything Alma does with this role is just so sweet and so lovely. There's a terrific tenderness to her performance and a warmth that radiates from her. It's a performance that I think will remind people of their own grandparents and it's a really terrific role written for an older performer in musical theatre, which I commend. Then we have Manuel Pacific and Gabriela Garcia who are playing Oscar and Nicole, the married younger couple who are running the restaurant slash memorial service provider. They're very charming, again very believably in love as a couple. He gets to access some really meaningful parts of his character. I would like to see just a little bit more development there and some more specificity in his character so that he could show us a little bit more on stage. And I'd like more Gabriela Garcia as well. She's excellent at everything she gets to do in this show, but of all the characters, I feel that she could have a little bit more. Her roles are basically worrying about her husband and acting as this sort of a cultural liaison within the context of the show, such as pointing out that it's really just a basic white girl thing to think that they always drink margaritas. And finally, an unexpected heartbreaking moment is offered by Leon Craig, who plays this very lovable chef at the restaurant who it transpires it is an enormous fan of Heartbreak Radio, and he just about dies when he finds out that Ken Ryan and the rest of the band members are coming to his restaurant. All of which gets played for laughs for much of the duration of the show, but then right at the end, he gets this beautiful moment of sincerity when he has this heart to heart with Kenna, which means a lot to the both of them. It's this beautiful, exposing moment that's super relatable. He's an LGBT character. I like that that's included within the show. It doesn't feel shoehorned. He feels like a real, relatable person, but one that's super flamboyant, super funny, and heartbreakingly honest. So who would I recommend this show to? Honestly, because this is on for such a limited period in the UK, I think everyone needs to go and see it because you're going to come to find out how good it is somewhere down the line and you're going to regret not having seen this world premiere production. Who knows when this is going to be coming back to the UK if that is even on the cards. I hope so and I think this is a strong enough show that we will see it on Broadway, we will see it back in the West End. If there was a market for Waitress, there is absolutely a market for this and it has this jukebox score which should give it a certain amount of commercial popularity. I think this show could be a really big hit and it has so much heart, it has so much honesty, it brings this beautiful Latin culture to the stage in a really authentic and honest way. If that resonates with you personally, I think you would love this show. Anyone who really loves Roy Orbison music, that includes my mother, would absolutely love this show because it's, it's just fantastic to get to hear these songs, the way they're performed, so emotive, so passionate, so brilliant. If you liked Anne Juliet, if you're looking for something that's really just gonna make you beam, but also has a lot of tears, like Sorrowful, but happy tears, go and see this show. It talks very meaningfully about grief and it shows you that from all sorts of different perspectives. But those have been my thoughts about In Dreams, the new musical currently playing at Leeds Playhouse, ahead of what I can only assume is going to be huge global success. Please, please, please go and see this show if you get the chance. I already want to go and see it again. I won't be able to make it back to Leeds to go and see it again, but I want to because it's that good. Thank you for watching today's review. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, make sure to subscribe to my theatre-themed YouTube channel for many more reviews, interviews, theatre news, features, and lots of other stagey content coming very soon. I hope that everyone's staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>